Does this work? Hmm. Let's see. Looks like I got audio. Welcome to Drawing Cats with Michael. I thought I can hear myself. Why can't I hear myself? Where do I hear myself? Maybe I should turn that down. Hmm. Anyways. I thought today we would learn how to draw a few cats. Can you see my beautiful setup here? Cat number one. Beautiful, <laughs> cute kitty. I got some more cats. Maybe we'll draw four cats within the hour. Now, um, when you're drawing, best thing about drawing is it doesn't matter what kind of equipment you have. You can have a pencil. You could have a colored pencil. You could have a little broken piece of chalk. You could have, what else we got? You could have a pen. This is a pink pen, Olive's favorite color. Um, let's see, what else could you have? You could have, oh, actually I've been doing a lot of art with these. three crayons. You could just use uh, water. No, I don't think you could use water. Maybe for watercolor. Anyways, so let's see. Oh, can you see my cool background here? Ooh, I can move it around. <laughs> Hi. It's a cat background. Anyways, so let's get started. I hope this microphone is loud enough and you can hear me. Maybe I'll turn it up a little bit somewhere around there. Is that loud enough? Hmm. You can always turn me up if you need. Um, so drawing a cat, where do we start? Well, I would just draw my own cat. Oh, I think it's peaking a little bit. I need to turn down. Okay. I would just draw my own cat, but she does not sit still. So I took pictures from the internet of internet cats. Look at this guy, big old round eyes. Um, you know what? Next time I can actually, well, because there's nobody watching yet live. Let's see, I'm gonna figure this out real quick. I think what I can do is put the picture of the kitty next to me here. Um, I think I just typed in cat on Google. Let's see if I can find the same cat. Mm -hmm. Oh, there he is. All right. I'm going to put him on my desktop. And then I'm going to say new image. Let's see. I'm going to, this is all just a test here. Um, yeah, that's the one I want. So bear with me. Oh, look at that. So here is the picture. <laughs> cool. It's nice. I'll put them right next to me. So here's... <laughs> This same picture right here. Okay. Um, <laughs> so, what should I choose to draw with? Um, you can you can choose um, anything you have lying around. Like I said, a pencil, a pen, a crayon. I think I'm gonna use this. Oh, you know what? This cat is blocking a little bit of what I'm doing, so I'm going to put her over here. <clears throat> I'm going to use this little black piece of, where am I, there, um, chalk, because it's fun to use. All right. All right, so let's see, where do we start with the kitty? 
I'm going to draw him or her the same size as the paper. So I actually have a piece of paper that is the same size. But feel free to use anything as a paper as well. You could use a little scrap of whatever. Um, don't use toilet paper, though. That stuff's uh, very valuable. Um, you could use the back of uh, in the newspaper. You could use, um, you know, a piece of cardboard. I could draw right on there if I wanted to. Actually, I did. I drew drawing cats with Michael. So, yes, you don't need to have a piece of paper. This is actually, I think, let's see. Yeah, there's a little olive drawing on the back of this. I have lots of paper lying around the house with drawings on both sides, just for fun. So, here we go. Let's see. This cat, let's see. I see the main shapes are what I'm looking out for first. We've got... We've got the hands, which are kind of an oval shape. We have the head, which is also kind of an oval shape. We have these triangle ears. See what kind of shapes you can see in the kitty. Hmm. We, yeah, there's smaller shapes like the circle eyes and then the triangle nose and the mouth. So, let's just pick the biggest shape first. That's what I like to do. So, I take the head shape. I think that's probably our biggest shape. And now, I want to kind of make sure I have enough space. So, the top of her head is right there. I'm going to draw a line right about there. Yeah. Just kind of match where that is. Kind of do some measurements first. Okay, the bottom of the chin, right there. Let's see, that looks like it's, here's halfway on the page. Maybe it's a little bit below halfway mark. So here's my halfway mark. Here's a little bit below, maybe right here. So that's gonna be the top and the bottom of my oval, my head oval. Now let's see if we can mark the sides like that. You know, if I wanted to, I could just pull straight down since I have my picture right above, but I'm not going to do that. I'm actually going to use this space on the side. So let's see if this is one, two, it's a little bit more than if I cut the paper into three. So maybe like mean-ish, somewhere around there, here and here. There, got some measurements for my kitty's head so now I can go ahead and just do an oval to connect all those all right well, that's pretty good pretty nice oval all right so next let's do let's just do the little oval hands these guys all right mm, here we go looks like there's one here one here, and there's a little bit of space between the wall. I actually did it a little bit too close to the uh, the wall, the edge of the paper. And then this side of the oval hits is about even with the side of the face. So if we just take that line down, okay, that's going to be this side of the oval. This side will be mm, an inch and a half. So actually, this should be my oval like that. See, I did the first time without thinking, and I made it too small. Let's do the same with this one. It's about the same rules. It's, it lines up with this side of the cheek. Leave a little bit of space. Make an oval. All right. So now we have our head shape, and we have our feet. Now let's connect them. It looks like this kind of comes down like this. This side actually comes down like that. So if we have our side of our ovals, and we come down from the cheek like that, let's just do that line. So down from the cheek to the top of this oval, like that. Looks pretty good. I hope you can hear me. I think it looks like my microphone's working here. Um, but we'll see after I post this. Okay, and then this one, 
instead of being completely the mirror image of this one, it actually kind of goes, it has an outward curve going to the edge of here, starting from about the same spot though. So we'll just do that. Like that. Hey, <laughs> it looks like a little person or something. Okay. Now, actually, there's like an edge of the picture here, but it kind of looks like an edge of a table. So I'm going to go ahead and draw that right there, connecting the bottom. Um, that just kind of gives it the effect. I can actually carry that over on either side. So I'm going to do that. That gives it the effect of the kitty kind of looking over a table. <laughs> okay. So next, I think the main shapes are going to be these two triangle ears. So that's what we'll do. So somewhere on the side of the head where it looks like it connects, maybe... Actually, it looks like it's straight above where the uh, neck connection was. So let's just go up from here and make a point. Same on the other side. Make a point there. All right. So now we have those edges of the ear points. Hmm. I'm actually going to try to measure this area to get the other points. So it looks like it covers about that. So that's that area. Now... I can just kind of draw triangles, roughly the same shape and size as the triangles. Look at that! There we go! Got some ears! <laughs> Alright. So, let's see. I'm going to do the eyes next, I think. So, let's, I'm going to make this picture a little bit bigger again, just to see what's going on. Aha! So, what we have, hmm, I wonder if I can, let's see, no, nah, it's not going to work. Um, I was going to see if I could use my pointer, my mouse pointer, and point to different parts on the face, but I will have to figure that out later. Um, <clears throat> so, next let's draw these two big eyes. Now we don't want to draw them too big because that wouldn't be like the picture. I'll draw them just the right size. So maybe maybe I'll, I'll measure the space between them so I don't mess that up. Looks like it's a little bit smaller than this space. So maybe like that's the, me the measurement between them. I don't know if you can see that but I put two little marks here. That's just so I get the space between the eyes correct. Sometimes that's the way to do it. Instead of looking at the shape of the eye, you look at the shape between the eyes. So speaking of that shape, um, this looks about the same distance as to the side of the head. So um, let's see. So I'm going to do another mark like that. So now I kind of got the outside of the eyes. Now I'm going to just go ahead and draw a circle between the two marks. Something like that. <laughs> this is looking like a spooky cat so far. But that's all right. So now I'm going to do this shape. So this is a fun part of drawing cats, I found, is the nose and the mouth. Because, and let me zoom in to my own video. All right, so if you see up here, the, the main, if you look at the darkest areas, the darkest areas are this kind of V shape, and then a down, and then a upside down V shape. It's kind of like this. Yeah. And then we can kind of connect the top like that. So that's what a cat's mouth and nose looks like with the mouth closed. Um, so that's what we're going to do when I move down. I'm going to do this so I can see like that. Okay. And then, um, let's see. So looks like these, this, these two lines kind of point up toward, actually, maybe I should find this point first. That's about level. It's in the middle of the face about level with these shoulder areas. So I'm just going to make that point here. And then I'm going to make lines going in this 
kind of triangle motion towards the inner side of the eye, like that, and then like that. Might have made them a little too long, but that's okay. And then I'm going to go down. And do a mirrored kind of downward triangle like that. All right. Cool. Here we go. I'm going to zoom back out. Let's see. How do I do that? Oops. Um, no, I want this. I want this. I want you to zoom out. <laughs> Okay. Now I'll move. Oops. I'll move you out of. The, I'll move this kitty. Move him off the screen for now. Okay. So let's see. What do we got to do? All right. So now I want to connect this top of the nose here. Um, I went a little bit too far on these lines, so I'm going to go a little under it. All right. Now I will do, let's see, so I keep moving, I keep getting the most obvious, biggest shapes first, and I move along to the uh, more detail-oriented stuff. So as you can see, I've got big, chunky shapes. He's looking pretty good so far, but what would be the next obvious shape on this? Um, well, let's see, I think maybe this this area of the mouth that's white, I could do that. So it kind of comes from the edges of the nose and around in an oval, sort of like that. There we go. That's looking good. Um, I'm going to save the uh, um, whisker. <coughs> Excuse me. I got one more coming. I, I can feel it. <coughs> Excuse me. All right, <laughs> so I'll wash my hands after this video. <laughs> okay, uh, so now is the point when I think we've got most of the structure down, and now it's about getting this beautiful pattern of the cat. Um, and I look at the lights and the darks. There's some dark area here. This is more light area. These dark lines going up, dark lines going... So I like to just start with the darkest ones and press hard with your pencil or shade really uh, a lot with your crayon or your pen, whatever you want to do to make it darker. But looking around on the page, the darkest, we've got these dark circles in the eyes. We've got two nostrils to take care of and we have these claws and we've got these areas of fur. So I'm just going to start with the eyes. Now, looking at the eyes, this actually seems like a very important part. Almost the brightest part on the cat is that little circle right there on the eye. So I'm going to go ahead and make that little circle so I don't fill it in with black. So he's got two little circles. And now I'm going to do the big circle, but being careful. This is where I'll be careful not to go inside that little circle. So now I've got something like that, and I'm going to fill in with black that area. Or it doesn't have to be black, it could be whatever color pencil you're using. And since I'm using this uh, this kind of chalk, my drawing is going to get a little bit smeary if I put my hand on it, which I have been doing. What can you do? Alright, so it's a little bit wonky. There's the one eye is a little bit bigger than the other eye. That's okay. Uh, let's see if I can adjust and make them a little bit more even. I can't erase with this, so, uh, you know, whatever errors happen, happen. All right, next, so we got the eyes. I'm going to do the two nostrils. Nostril. Nostril. And then and next, I'm going to do these uh, claws, which I might have to um, move it over to see the claw. There we go. These claws here. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. They look like they're kind of thicker towards the top and then a thin line at the bottom. So one, two, I'm just looking back and forth really quickly to make sure I got the space spacing on this uh, sort of accurate. 
So a little thicker on the top, a little thinner on the bottom. Almost like an upside down triangle with a line attached to it or something. There. All right, next I'm going to do, uh, let's see, the, the dots where the whiskers come out. So we're going to do dot, 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 dot. Okay, you're going to do the same kind of coming out this way. Again, I'm not just poking them wherever. I'm looking at this picture, and I was kind of quickly... It's nice, actually, having them laid right next to each other, if possible. If you could have your drawing on the table next to um, a picture of whatever you're drawing. Um, it, it's hard, maybe with the computer screen to do that, but if you have your computer screen in front of you with me, then you could have your paper. And we'll figure this out as we go on. My next drawing video will be, I'm going to do it Tuesdays and Thursdays um, at 1 um, while we're in this video world. So look forward to Tuesdays and Thursdays at 1. I'll be live doing this and um, yeah, and we'll see how it goes. It, but you can watch the videos anytime after I post them. So don't worry if you're if you're busy staying inside <laughs> doing whatever. Okay, so let's see. I got the uh, nostrils. I got the little dots. I got that. All right. So the next darkest lines I see are maybe these ones. So they kind of come in from the side like that. And then these are all fur lines. These are really what make it make the cats unique what from each other. So this cat has all cats will kind of look different. Um there's these lines coming down from the top that are kind of like that. Okay. Um there's this little patch right here. Maybe like patch right there. Um there's this little patch right here. So maybe like that. Now I try to vary the way I'm using my crayon or pen or whatever. Um, instead of just always doing one line going down or scribbling like little Z's or doing a little circle motion, you can practice these at home, whatever you want to do. Uh, you know, more scribbly. So to fill a space like this, you can kind of choose different textures. So which one would be most like a cat? Would we want like scribbly, curly? Or would we want more straight lines? Or maybe like a Z type thing going on? To me, when I look at the cat fur, and maybe we can pull up that video one more time here. Um pull up the picture of him, I mean, on the screen. Let's see, uh, insert image from my computer. He's sitting on my desktop. Okay. So if we look at our kitty here, look at the shape of his fur. Um, especially around his neck and chest. It's kind of, looks like it's well, it is poking out from his skin out into the world, his fur is, but kind of in a, um, I see almost a zigzag pattern. I'll show you what I mean when I take this, oops, when I take this down, let's see, let's just move him over here so I can grab him, whatever. But I see a kind of a zigzag pattern, sort of like going down like this. So all of this right here is going to be that. So... What I like to do is just choose the darkest parts to do that. So there's one here, here, so I'm going to go zigzag, here, kind of zigzag. And each texture you do, whether it be fur or skin or wood, will have a different kind of shape, different way of moving your pe pencil or crayon or whatever. Um, to make it look realistic. And I'm going to use the same pattern for this kind of area up here. Um, just paying attention to how dark and how light it is on the actual animal. Uh, I don't want to 
make anything on my cat darker or lighter than it is on that cat. I kind of want to match it. So I'm just kind of pressing very lightly while doing this with my crayon thing here. Um, it looks like on the nose there's two darker areas pointing towards the eyes. So that's what I'm going to do. So I got one, two, all right. And I'm going to keep doing these kind of zigzag forms. Keeping it light here, it looks like the brow line has kind of a light, but then it darkens up between the eyes a little bit. Um, fill out over here. All right. <laughs> He's looking kind of cute. Okay, and then uh, same thing. I think this whole body area, if you kind of blur your eyes, and it might be hard to see on the screen, but maybe if I pull this guy back in, if you kind of blur your eyes and look at this kitty, the chest area is a little bit darker, just a little bit darker than, so this chest area is a little bit darker than the whole head. So on my cat right now, I've got some details in the face, but this there's a lot of white going on here. So I want to get rid of pretty much all that white. And cool thing about a crayon, especially with no sheath on it, you can kind of turn sideways and fill a lot of space quickly. Watch that. So I'm still doing a zigzag motion, but with the whole crayon. And I'm actually going to fill in the rest of the face doing that, because that looks really cool. All right. Now, I haven't done any work on the ears, so I'm going to go ahead and do this, darken up the edges of the ears, and then fill in the ears. It looks like instead of zigzags going up and down, the ears almost have very wide zigzags going left to right, like, like this, kind of. So that's what I'm going to do very lightly with my thing here, is do side to side zigzags. All right, cool. Um, now we're gonna move on to the paws because that looks like my most unfinished area on here is these paws. Um, so let's see, well, how do I do this? Okay, so let's look at this. It looks like the, the top is a little darker than the fingers. So I'm just gonna do a kind of a darker area on top. All right, and the fingers, I'm gonna it doesn't have quite as much zigzag as the rest of the fur, I think because the fur is shorter. So I'm going to do small, kind of scrubby strokes with this sideways again. If you have a pencil or a pen, well, if you have like a ballpoint pen, like something like, uh, something like this, something like this, ballpoint pen. This is a green one. I'm going to zoom in so I can show you this. Um, let's see. Yeah. Okay. Zooming in. Zooming in. Running out of space on my thing here. But I'll use this little way. Something like this with your ballpoint pen is a good way to shade. You just kind of scribble back and forth. Like I said, side to side, up and down. You can do the same kind of scribbly motion. I realize it's a little bit blurry, but um, hopefully you can see what I'm doing. Um, you can't obviously do like a sideways draw with a pen, pen but you can, you can kind of be light with the touch and get this, get the lighter areas by just not being very, don't push very hard and don't go over one area too much. If you want to make it dark, you do the opposite. You push a little harder, and you scrub, scrub, scrub through. Okay, anyways, I digress. Um, let's see. Let's back up this video a little bit. Back up. Ooh, cats, 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 cats. All right, here we go. Here we are again. Hey, it's looking at my dimensions. I'm finding coming from the side are a little bit off. 
Um, if I was drawing straight on, I could be a little bit more exact with the shapes, but I'm pretty happy with um, the general texture of it. Um, let's see, oh, I don't have the whiskers. So this is a problem that you run into sometimes with um, mediums like crayon or paint, mm, not necessarily paint, but pen certainly, anything you can't erase, is that trying to draw with white, if you look closely, the, uh, the whiskers on this cat, and I don't know, is it most cats? Looks like the kitties in the background picture have white whiskers. But yes, the whiskers are white on this kitty. Um, so good. <laughs> Sorry, I'm moving it all around. But look at the whiskers on it. They're white. So, and so are the whiskers on these background kitties. Um, the problem with white whiskers, I think I'm just trying to <laughs> trying to get my video back in center. Problem with the white whiskers is that. I have a black or dark gray crayon, so I can't draw white on top. So I have to make kind of an artistic choice to go away from reality and not draw something, not draw white whiskers, but I'll have to draw black whiskers. Something to keep in mind. Um, if I had some white paint or a white um, pen or something, I could maybe get those white whiskers on top, which would probably look cool. But I don't, so I'm gonna just follow the shape of these whiskers with my black. So I go down. Um, I'm gonna go down with the this clump uh, from the middle all the way down to the side of the uh, paw. So I'll go like that. And then I'll mirror that on the other side. All right, then there's like, seems like there's some whiskers even closer in, but smaller, like that. And then there's these, the furthest out ones kind of go like that. So we're going to do like that. Um, yeah, there's a few more in between, so you can fill it in if you want. Not too much. All right, that's looking pretty cute. Okay, one thing I like to do on my drawings, especially if they've got a lot of white and I have a messy outline, which I do. I have quite a messy outline on my cat one thing you can do is fill in the outline and push in or fit, fill in the outside and push in your outline so what i mean is i'm just gonna start filling in my outside dark as i can go i'm just gonna go right over those whiskers because um, i don't necessarily need them and i'm not gonna go below the table i drew So let's see, just like that. Uh -huh. I'm gonna fill in, and this is a cool technique you can do with your drawings anytime when you feel like you did a good job, but your uh, maybe your outline isn't good or it's a little bit messy, because you'll see that by doing this, it hides the little mistakes I might have made around my edges while drawing the first shapes. Oh, drop my crane. Right. So he's looking good. So I, this one had a white background, but I've chosen to kind of stray from that. Um, let's see, now I can just kind of shade him a little bit more. Now that I've got a black background, I feel like he needs to be a little bit less bright. Um, uh, let's see, around this area, certainly, around this area, um, there, <laughs> that'll do. So there's kitty number one, and I'm going to move on to kitty number two, um, and I'll use a different medium too, so bear with me for a second, I'm going to, let's see. choose one of these kitties. I have sitting, looking up kitty. I've got laying down, majestic, lioness kitty. 
And I've got upside down kitty now. I've got big, furry, beautiful kitty. I'm pretty inspired by this one, to be honest. Or this, this one's nice too. I don't, I don't know, lioness is nice. Um, since we had a big eye looking straight ahead kitty, this guy's kind of looking straight ahead too. I think I'll try this one, because this kitty's kind of looking up to the side. Um, also, I get some tail um, here to draw, which is nice, because this kitty didn't have a tail. All right, so let me remove this piece. I'll give this, I think Olive might appreciate this uh, drawing, so I'll give it to her. Here's my, uh, let's see, here's my final, oh, there we go, final crayon kitty. Um, so let's put up kitty number two on here. And since this is a video, if I'm going too fast or slow, or you can speed me up or slow me down by pressing pause. Or actually in video settings, if you're watching a video, you can, not live maybe, but after the fact, you can actually put the video at 75% or 125%, which makes me go faster or slower. But I might talk like this or something. All right, let me find another piece of paper lying around. Actually, you know what? It's just for uh, conservation's sake, I'm gonna use, use me, I'm gonna use the back of the one I just did. <laughs> My little clamps set set up here. I'm pretty happy with. It seems to be working pretty well. I'm curious to watch this afterwards and see how the audio and everything worked as well. Okay. So let me get my, my tape. Here's my tape. And for this one, I'm going to use a different medium, which means I'm going to use something instead of a chalk crayon like I was using. Maybe I'll use something with color. Let's see. I've got a blue crayon. Um, I feel like this would be the easiest to see on the camera, so I'm going to just go with a blue crayon. So the last thing I used was actually more of a pastel. Um, this is a different color. I don't know where I just put that, but um, this is what I used for the last one came from the same set it was a black one but it's this type of kind of messy pastel it's I've got it all over my fingers now which is why I have one paper towel actually just a portion of a paper towel because you can't just be using those things left and right um, just to wipe off my fingers um, uh, one thing you can do actually before I move on to this next cat because I have time um, with a paper towel or your finger actually when you use uh, pastels is you can blend in things so I'm looking at this background and I want to kind of you can do this with pencil too actually uh, I want to make sure my edges are nice and clean so I'm gonna actually scrub around around my cat a little bit let's see what kind of effect that gives it what, one of my favorite things about art is you can really get hands-on with it and just play, play with your mediums, play with your paper or your paints or your whatever's on the paper. You can push around, you can add things to it. There's no rules to anything with art, except for stay safe and wash your hands. Alright, so that kind of smoothed up, I don't know if you can tell the difference, but it smoothed up the uh, the background a little bit. You can't see my individual crayon strokes. It's all kind of pushed together. Actually, I, I kind of want to do the same thing on the eyes just to make them look smoother. See how that works. Uh, well, 
kind of worked, but the problem with that was I covered up a little bit of that white. The white that I was trying to preserve. So, let me get my, I have a little eraser bin here. I'll just see if I can, I don't know if this stuff erases, but let's see. Oh, it kind of does. Let's get that white back in the eyes. Ah, yeah. There we go. I actually can bring the white wherever I want. I wonder if I can get one of those whiskers. Sorta. Of. Anyways. Um, that's what I call futzing or um, fussing around with, dabbling. Sometimes when you do art, I certainly do, is I'll start dabbling on little things that's like, I could have just left the first time. And then sometimes it makes the drawing worse. Anyways, let's draw this cat. So again, we're looking for the biggest shapes first. I'm going to actually write that on my board. Biggest shape first. That way I can remember next video to mention it as well. Biggest shapes first. So what's the biggest shape on this kitty? Let me zoom in for you. Um, here we go. Zooming in. Zooming in. All right, what's the biggest shape on this kitty? Um, well, there's the other one had nice oval things going on. This one doesn't have as many clean, obvious shapes to me, but I think this shape, I, you can't, there's not really a name for it, but that might be the biggest shape, um, followed by the shape of the head, and then that kind of creates this white space between them. You know what? I think we should chop this shape into two so we've got kind of the legs and we've got the behind and the back i think that makes sense okay so first thing we're going to do is draw the biggest shapes which are one two three i guess this could count as a shape too so hmm i want to have enough space so the first thing i'm going to do is measure the top of the head again that little spot, which is, I don't know if you can see the top all the way, but it's about mm, an inch and a half from the top. So I'm just going to draw that little line right there, just so I don't go above it, because I know I can fit the ears above that. So that's the top of that line. Let's see if I can measure the chin, this, so this line, the chin, which is about, here's maybe halfway, a little bit above halfway. So here's halfway. A little bit above halfway right here. That'd be the chin. Okay. Which also happens to be the top of this shape here. So we got like the top of that shape. Anyway, so the bottom of the feet are almost touching the bottom of the page, but not quite. Maybe like right here. All right. So I think that's enough information. And this actually, that's enough information probably to start the shapes. So there's this kind of line going through maybe touching the right ear to the chin all the way to the toe. So touching the right ear, here's the chin, here is the toe. And from that toe, I'm going to draw a shape up to this point. Let's see. Kind of like this. And then I'm going to cut down to here. Maybe like that and then I'm gonna draw this shape around like this so all right so kind of got this I don't know half-eaten banana shape um, going on there and then I'm gonna do this shark fin type shape coming on from the backside so I've got kind of this shark fin I don't know, this reminds me of a shark fin right here, this triangle-ish. Alright, and then I've got the shape of the head, which actually is kind of an oval. And it's 
uh, left side lines up with this. So I've got kind of an oval to the chin to like here. So maybe like that. Yeah, that looks about right. Okay, now I'm going to connect this coming down like that. Add two little ears, one coming off to the side, one coming up here. Again, if I'm going too fast, feel free to pause and catch up. This should be the drawing that you have, something along those lines. All right, um, just to make it look more cat-like, let's do the tail. Now, instead of just looking at the tail, I'm actually looking at this white area, which I just covered up some. But this white area makes almost a little triangle. So that's what I'm going to draw, that little triangle here. And then the tail actually cuts around like that. So now I'm going to cut that around. I don't know. It Maybe it's different for everybody, but uh, for me, drawing that little triangle or drawing the negative space, so negative space, Negative space is all the white area, everything that's not the cat. So drawing this negative space kind of gets my mind off of drawing a cat for a second and I can be more, I don't know, scientific about it. So where were we? Okay, next biggest shape. We got the ears, we got the head, we've got the whole body. Now we can start, I think we've got the whole cat on the page. Now we have to just start cutting these shapes into smaller shapes. So let's do this line separating the feet since we have one big foot block here. We can just kind of approximate a line like that separating them. Um, we can also draw, see this white area here? That's what I'm going to do next. So uh, looks like it kind of goes up like that and then up like this, and um, those of you that I have watched through till now, um, please let me know in the comment um, what you would like to draw next week, and I'll make a video. I'll make two, at least two videos, one on Tuesday and one on Thursday, live of how to draw something else. I figured we'd start with cats since uh, that's a household pet that many people have, some people have had, um, and everybody knows what a cat is. So, um, But I'm totally open to suggestions. I'm, I'm willing to teach how to draw whatever because um, I sort of treat everything um, the same as far as drawing them goes. Just start with the shapes and keep getting smaller and smaller. Anyways, I've got 10 minutes to finish this cat, so let's get going. Let me zoom in so I can see, you guys can see my face a little bit with while I'm drawing. There we go. Okay, so let's see where we're at. I think we need to do the face details now. So. If I drew the face details as I would imagine them, right in the center, it would look like the cat's looking straight at us. If I would as if I were to draw here is here's a face. If I were to draw it like this, two eyes, and then that mouth shape we learned earlier, it would look like the cat is facing straight at us. And that's not what we want. We want him to face that way, like this cat is. So we have to be very extra careful for where everything is. So this eye actually is touching the side of the face just under the ear. So it's touching the side of the face just under the ear. So I'm going to just draw a little eye there. This eye is, if I look at the face, it's almost centered in the center of the head. And it's got this kind of shape like this, like a sideways teardrop or something but it's centered in the face which is interesting so and it happens to be just maybe a hair lower than this eye on the head so we're going to start a little bit lower and do this kind of teardrop shape there cool doesn't have to be perfect okay and then we've got this 
kind of triangle for the nose. Um, bridging between them. It's also at a kind uh, a lop lopsided angle. And then we go down. So again, we're going to draw this shape for the nose and then this shape for the mouth. So we get this kind of running guy. Same as the other cat we drew, just this one's at an angle. And actually the this line comes down like that. So it comes down. So we'll do that coming down and then this one over to the side. And there we go. Cool. So now I'm going to try to work darks to lights now. So the tail, the tail is quite dark. So I'm just going to fill that in. It's kind of got stripes going this way, so I'm going to I'm going to follow that pattern like this. So with my crayon I'm kind of letting up I made some almost uh, implied stripes on it by go pressing hard and then lighting up and then pressing hard and then lighting it up and then pressing hard just like that so that I'm gonna try to follow that motif through the whole thing there's got this dark kind of sliver here this kind of shape so I'm gonna do that same which way are the stripes going? Uh, the stripes look like they're going up and down at that area. So I'm going to do the same kind of thing where I go dark, lighten up, go dark, lighten up through that little sliver. The whole back side, again, is the next probably darkest spot with the bottom being slightly darker than the middle. So I'm going to skip this white area, but other than that, I'm going to just kind of fill that in. And then uh, the stripes kind of go like that, so I'm going to try to follow that pattern. Light, then press harder, and then go lighter, press harder, lighter, press harder, lighter, press harder, lighter. All right. Um, let's see, the face, we have these lines, like, there's one that does like that, and then one that goes like that. Can you see them? Let's see. Maybe if I get closer. These two lines. Right here. One, two. So, let me squeeze up to that. And then, so I'm going to try to match that. This one kind of goes up goes down, this one goes around like that, then he's got a little chin strap going on, and this area is a little darker, comes around and does, kind of comes down on the head like that, so we're going to go down on the head and up and around. Again, really paying attention to where the darkest areas are and where the lightest areas are, and that's m my main focus. I'm not as focused on how well I'm drawing it or the shapes because it'll just give it character if it's kind of wonky or off in a funny way but the close attention to how dark and light something is also known as the value will certainly give your drawing more life so there you go I'm gonna do the same. These stripes are very strong, so I'm actually going to do the strongest stripes really darkly before I film the rest. So there's like some stripes. I'm just my eye is going boop 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 back and forth between the two. Especially because I've only I've got five minutes before I'm just going to give it over to Zach, who has. Some things to say of his own. I think he's doing music tomorrow and today some uh, just some shout outs and uh, questions and stuff. Q&A I think he wrote on there. Okay so let's see I'm gonna just quickly fill that in, fill that in. <laughs> All right <laughs> so you know Let's see. 
cats, 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 cats. So there's a a very quickly drawn. Uh, there's somebody who's outside my house. I can't tell if he's. Oh, it's it's Ben. I think he's picking up bread. Ginger is quite the bread salesman. Okay, so uh, it looks pretty good. Pretty pretty good. With this last four minutes, I'm gonna. Looks like that's a little darker, so I'm gonna darken up this whole area. And you know what I can do is the same thing I did with the last one with the outside. And since I've got crayons, I'm just gonna use a different color and come in this uh, this left side here like this. Uh, actually, the whole outside, I'm just gonna fill in red this all right and then the one of the cool things red and blue actually red and blue together make purple and purple is the darkest color so anywhere I go over this drawing of blue with red I'm gonna get a really nice dark almost black color it'll read as black so I can do that. Kind of quickly made an outline. And then I'm going to look for the darkest, most important parts, which happen to be the eyes, probably. The eyes are usually the most important part of any portrait, animal or human. Uh, and then I'm going to go through that nose. And then maybe this stripe over here. Just quickly get the darkest areas. The tail was really dark. Uh, this line between the feet for a minute is dark. And then here. All right, I'm going to leave it at that because I ran out of time. But this was really fun, you guys. So here's my drawing. Oh, oh. <laughs> here's my cat. Meow. And I hope you learned something. Um, please, yeah, leave a comment for what you want to learn. Uh, how to draw and I'll do my best. Uh, thank you. This is Michael signing out. Stay tuned for Zach.